Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. Hi, and it is festive time. It is the Christmas season and it is NHK. So I brought out my Christmas sweater. Oh, this is this and that. We are going to discuss all things that have been going on in the skating world. If you are new here, please subscribe below and smash that like button because like cardboard cutouts instead of people, we have missed you. Okay. <laughs> Well, interesting to see the NHK audience here. Mm. Like everyone was like um, an alternating seat. Very, yes. Everyone wearing a mask. Yes. Everyone still cheering. Yeah, it was interesting. All the coaches fully covered. I know. I felt like we were in a mental palate cleanser after spending so much time in Russia. You know, we've been gaslit and there's been so much happening, so much theatrics and drama. And I was just like, Oh, 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 oh. It was, it was with that new girl in, in the prince, princess dress that- um, The silver medalist. Uh, the bronze medalist, right? The bronze medalist of the sorry, ladies. Sorry, she was second in the, yeah, okay. Yes, yeah. Reno Matsuki. Oh, oh, I was just- I What was a breath of fresh day. air she was. That's a perfect way to describe it. It's like, <gasps> It just was so effervescent and light and lovely, a little juniorish, but like How did lovely she to see. 17 falling leaves. I don't know. Each one like jumped and made my heart do a flutter. Yeah. We were, and uh, you know, at a certain point, I was taken away, as Peggy Fleming would say. It was like I was on the ice with her. You know, I didn't know if she kept doing the same jumping pass in the same corner with the same camera angle, but and I didn't know if we were repeating transitions, but like I was swept on a journey with her. I don't know if she did like 17 double axle, triple toes and triple toe comedy. Like, I don't know what she did. I can't tell you. I was just like her back three to like knee bend. I was like, we haven't seen any of this in Russia. None of this. Okay. Yeah, and it's interesting because what we do get in Russia is this sort of like fierce competitiveness. Yes, the Russian skater. And to see a girl like this take the ice, it was just like joyous. It, she just like loved skating and she shared her skating with us and everything took its time and was just really, really beautiful. She was like an angel girl. It was like- Yes, I'm so glad you felt that too. Cause I, it, she was a moment for me. And like, I've been watching the Queen's Gambit. Okay, Which so- I love, I loved the Queen's Gambit so much. So <clears throat> I know that coach is abusive, but I don't have a ponytail that she can pull. I want to just go to her for all the edges and knees, okay? Yeah. yeah. And does she have a new jump coach there? Because these new ones aren't jumping the same way as the old ones. This girl, maybe she's transported. I don't know her backstory. I don't know if she's a famous sibling. Like the Japanese can comment below and like teach us about these new ones. But this girl and Mao Shimada, who was in the junior Japanese later. Oh my God, we have like restored hope in skating through Japan. There is new talent coming up finally. It was looking a little dark for the last two seasons in terms of people really coming that I'm like, I could see them challenging on a world stage. She's done it, Jonathan. She has new people, okay? Out with the old, out to the Lombiels, out to the Lori Nickel world, and we have new ones to develop. Yeah, and she didn't look as close to these ones. Like I didn't sense that smothering maternal energy where she like brings them in and maybe says something like evil with a smile before she sends them to the ice. Right. Like, did she just kind of like pat this one girl on the hand a little bit? Like, I just was like, oh, we're not so close with these girls. Okay, all right. You but know. for this particular girl, it, it seemed to work because there was a real um, enjoyment of what she was doing and that's what, and we'll talk about it when we get to like Calorie or something like that. I don't necessarily get that from a lot of other skaters right now, so just, the fact that she has a passion for the sport she's participating in is pretty remarkable. I have a passion for her and all of her yes. students, okay? Yes, yes. Sure. And it's not right, but damn, it is good viewing, okay? Those, it is such a palate cleanser after a Terry. The edges you know, and knees in the, in the ladies department in particular. And no. Maybe she's abusive about, you know, things that, three turns. I don't know, I don't know. I've read the lawsuit 
documents like you all have. She's not banned yet. She's in the midst of litigation and well, she might have gotten into it with the wrong person in Japan, but you know, I am just taking on a journey with these girls. Get the skating skills while you can from her. Okay, maybe not the jumps. Maybe this girl had a different jump coach, but I do wonder like, did she steal the joy from Marin Honda? And is that why she just like lost her will to train and compete and do triple jumps? Because this girl has so many qualities we loved in young Marin Honda. Right. And then we watched Marin here and... I have to be honest, Dave, I didn't watch intentionally. After I, I saw toe. the score go up, I was like, you know, I'm kind of glutton for punishment if I keep watching and I know that it doesn't go the way I want it to. It's too hard to watch for me. She is interesting because when I watch Marin, I stare at her and I try to figure out like what it is that is like not working. I think she's not naturally athletic. And what I mean by that is like her core seems not as strong as some of these other girls because she cannot snap into rotation. And I don't know if it's her hips or what it is, but it seems like she would have to really like do some off ice training that she may not have the um, will to do to really be competitive. Like it, she just does not have that snap into her jumps like it's so loosey-goosey which makes her so like wonderful to watch on the ice but then when you watch well, it, her, it's the exact thing that makes it so lovely it's tough yeah but maybe it's just like a little too much where you're like okay like you could dial it back a little bit and we could it, it just it looks like whatever she would need to do it doesn't look like she's necessarily doing i mean a triple flip being like please at this point in time is just not cutting it. But I still, I do like to watch her still. I, 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 she's lovely. She's lovely, but she's, she's not going anywhere, you yeah. know? Yeah. And again, there's, there's now a very solid second group here that has emerged. Yes. That makes it even more baffling why one might continue in this scenario. Did we know that Young Yu had changed from Tom Z to Tammy as the main coach? Like, even Tammy even took that one. Okay. Well, this was my next question to you because seeing Young Yu here, I obviously thought she was going to factor a lot more than she did. But have we heard much about what she's doing? Like, has she been in Colorado at all? I think she's been with Mia Hamada at least for a while to compete at this event. Okay. It's interesting because, like, for instance, the triple axel. Um, fall and the additional fall in the short program, I was trying to determine like, is this circumstantial? Is this that she hasn't had her normal jump coach? Is this she just rusty and out there for the first time? Cause she was rotated, it looked. And she's, her, she seemed organized mentally. So I was just curious if you thought this was just her situation with COVID is sort of enacting itself or if, if there was something bigger at play here. Well, she looks taller. Like she looks like she's gained inches to limbs. Okay, like I just was like watching her limbs. Like, whoa! I don't remember that situation before. Yeah. But in the free, she looked great. Like you know, I think maybe she has just like grown and adjusted. And but it looked not bad. It looked um, the one thing. I mean, she could certainly go to some ballet classes at extent. But uh, I thought that she looked rather great in the free skate. Uh, I was thinking like, wow, Miyamata is working for her. I was yeah, and even even the um, what, Egyptian, was it an Egyptian mm -hmm. uh, short program? Um, they're trying. I, 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 see, I, I see a vast improvement in the overall presentation. I was just curious. The one thing that I noticed in her free program is that she, last year when she was doing the triple axel with Tom Z, she had a very strange entrance into the triple axel and it was like i want to say it was like straight or i noticed that it was different this time it looked different. some of her combinations also it looks like they found like deep entrances to work for her and to work, help the jump rotation out so it looked like some of that was happening where she's really like using her edges to help the jump and that seems to be more of a miyamata thing than something that tom z would understand right, right? or tammy um so they're more of like the drill sergeant approach. And I noticed that like the entrance was helping the jump 
and to the rhythm, the timing. So it looks like that has been helped with Mia Havana. So um, at this point, it looks like it's working for her. I'll be very curious to see um, the Korean skaters when we start to see them at their ranking competition in the coming weeks and things like that, because we haven't heard anything about them. We haven't seen them on TikTok very much. We have not uh, watched them. So I don't know what to expect at all from them. So, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's been oddly quiet. Yeah. So I was, I was very intrigued to see Young Yu here. And again, kind of thought she would have been more of a factor, but. Well, yeah, she, I mean, the short program was no go. Yeah. Um, also, you're Korean. You're skating in an entirely Japanese field. Right. I don't think anyone's going to be predisposed to help you or appreciate the differences in your skating if all of the judges have one like mindset, right? Like they're going to, things that you do are going to stick out. And I noticed that she did lose some of her levels on spins and like, I think spins and footwork. Uh, but there were some twos that were flashing up on the screen and she right. lost some key points there. And in a country where that matters, right? Like that, those kinds of things. So, and I don't think that her skating skills are of a Japanese quality. So come on, she was not Reno Mitsuki here. She was- Oh you know, my gosh, yeah. So in some aspects, like she had great jumps in the free, but there were things that she did that stuck out like a sore thumb, I thought. She yeah. just didn't look, um, as splendid on the ice. She didn't give me that like- well, more splendid than she has in the past. Just, she's not, yeah, she's not to Tessa Barbie status yet. No, okay, yeah. no. Tessa was coming out to watch some of the other events. She was like watching Daisuke. She was like, who did Marina say that was more talented than me? <laughs> okay, she was just watching. She saw that Marina get quotes. You know, she's given quotes about Marina before. But yes, she's she okay, okay. <laughs> she wanted to know. What Marina was saying, uh, that was, yeah, I don't know. It was, um, yeah, I think Young Yu, look, there are things here. She certainly has the jump edge over some of these girls. The skating skills, it's no. Um, the extension, yeah. no. The, no. So there's a workmanlike quality to Young Yu. She's yeah. very, she's the Colorado Springs of Korea. You know, she's um, yeah. taking a step in the right direction, I think. And, yeah. Turn your volume up a little bit. We can, your okay. baritone is just not. Oh, uh, let's see. I heard that before when I've been on Zoom. I wonder Much how... better now when you. I messed up setting. I need to engage. How is Okay, it? yes. Now. Uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> I don't want to go into my Mihara too much because it makes me. It's a tough situation. Let's move along. Um, <laughs> Lovely content. Lovely content. But I thought the programs were nice. Hope she is happy and well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Wakaba and Kaori. Okay. Ah, yes. Here we go. The Japanese Federation has always seemed to prefer Kaori. And I think they're wrong. Okay. Yes, but remember, Wakaba had a couple of huge missteps like a couple years ago, and I think she's just been been playing catch up ever since. She always seems to be a little bit of a late bloomer in the season yeah. in terms of getting the jumps. But then, at the, remember at twenty eighteen, you know, the Worlds that was at the very end of the season is when she really nailed it. Right. And it looks like it takes her that whole year to get it together, and maybe Calvary's a little bit more consistent early on. But right. then you don't get the end result from her, right? right. But right. in the early season, and they seem to love her personality and her look, and she's very charming, and, and that can sell very well. And maybe Wakaba's not as outgoing as that, but watching her here, I'm like, she is one heck of a performer. She really has worked and worked because she came up as like a little Majora Ito right. in terms of athletic ability with no style. Like no style, like it looked like she was out of the- I remember early on, they were trying to put like these big classical war horses on her with like the Scheherazades and things like that. And it was just not doing her any favors in the beginning, but they seem to have since sort of found this balance that works. It was painful in the beginning. Yeah. Painful, okay. 
her free. Now, I think her programs would inherently be better if they switched and gave her this is the short and the, the short is the free. But I think that this will challenge her to be a better performer and a better like artist in terms of the second. And I noticed that in the free, she was really like giving it in terms of her head and everything like that. So I was impressed. I think she feels music. It's just not necessarily always felt in an elegant way. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think she's listening and when she's had like more popular music, she's actually dancing to the music. Mm -hmm. It's just not necessarily refined or lyrical. Well, she has, she does not have like long balletic limbs. Okay. She just doesn't. She's built like a powerhouse and we appreciate it. Like, yeah, exactly. I saw you post the um, Midori Tanya side by side and it was mm -hmm. like, right, like this, this is again, mm -hmm. the closest kind of thing that gives me those feels. No, it was very close in terms of rotation. She did some better ones in the warm up. I was most pleased psychologically for her that she's taken the steps to put it out in competition, risk the fall, and do it the next day because that's such a mental hurdle, mm. right? To get past, to start landing it and getting into where you've attempted it and you've landed it and, right? Like now you can at least move forward. So think about it. Then she does it more times at nationals and she's risking a loss, which yeah. she got anyway, right? And Scott Hamilton always talk about even when you land the jump, the rest of the program can lose focus or things like that and how hard it is but she's doing that now. She's getting that out of the way and becoming more consistent so that next year we don't have this kind of a situation. It's but just a mainstay, yeah. It's not- Unless next year they're like, well, Calvary did beat Wakaba last season. It's like, well, she's putting the axle in. <laughs> like, I mean- and Everybody's got such a get out of jail free card with this season anyway. Do you know what I mean? I feel like every medal, every showdown it doesn't have the same weight as if this was a normal free Olympic season. Well, we've heard that Kauri practices the triple axel for a long time and seen clips and stuff, but she hasn't put it in and she hasn't taken that hurdle. So Wakaba is ahead of her in terms of what it's going to take next season, season after to really be competitive. And do you think that she's doing that kind of work to be there? So I would look at her very seriously for the Olympic team and look at her um, as someone who could challenge, because I think they have Rika Kihira, Wakaba Kauri, and then you don't know how Satoko will still factor in. So uh, those, it's very interesting to look at kind of that field. Um, I, well, and it's interesting because like, and we were talking about this in the Patreon judging in 99 with some of those big Eastern European jumpers. Like there is something to Wakaba just heating big elements that does start to create a performance factor that mm -hmm. again is not necessarily an artistic one but it's an energy one and the crowd gets going and i, I think where kauri is doing well by just maintaining what she's always done mm -hmm. and it's just nice that walk about seems to be keep moving forward because i have to be honest like especially seeing this matrix program for a second season in a row it's very much like now i do this now I do this part with my arms. You know what I mean? Like and It's funny that we pointed out that spiral sequence so long ago, right? But it really got a lot of attention here on social media and things okay. like that. Maybe she's performing it a bit better, um, things like that. But I think she's gone like as far as she's going to go artistically. Uh, whereas, you know, Wakaba, I was watching and when she was doing like the head thing and the footwork and it was like, she's improving. She is pushing forward and I, I'm intrigued. I think Calvary is very good as well. So I'm. But consistency will be her, her biggest strength, right? Yes. Like if, if walk up, if the planets align and walk gets it mm -hmm. on the right night, I think it, it will, will definitely go to walk it. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. So, um, but it seems like it takes her longer to get there, and Calvary is going to give you that steadiness. Yeah, but well, when it you know, this year they both started roughly. Yeah, well, I think everyone with quarantine, honey. <laughs> like I think, uh, and I think it has affected most um, female skaters more than male skaters. I think inherently, 
um, a harder time um, dealing with stuff that, you know, the males don't have to deal with as much. Um, so I, I think that that has been more challenging for them, um, especially as many are still growing. So uh, yeah, it was, what it was. The real question mark for me is where Satago falls in this lineup. Because, I mean, we're, we're going to kind of have five people maybe vying for that spot. I know. You know? But Yuka Sato has been working with her a little bit. And is that not just like the right thing in your mind of like two <laughs> I know, I like together? Time. Yeah. <sighs> Yuka, you know. Also, pause. We need to give credit where credit is due. Jillian is an enthusiastic girl. She loves skating. She loves. So we know, just so we know, because we keep getting asked, Jillian refers to Megan Duhamel. Yes. Okay. An old, old bit of Jillian Michaels having that kind of energy because I used to have a DVD of Jillian Michaels leading a yoga team. With the same intensity of Megan Duhamel. Yes. And it, like I was just doing the video one day and it just like, came into me that I'm like, oh my God, this would be if Megan Hamill was a yoga teacher. Like this would be the kind of like particular Zen that we would be getting. That's right. Answering that age old question, what if Megan Hamill was a yoga instructor? <laughs> yeah. This is like back in 2015 when she was doing like all the throw quads and talking about it very intently. Yeah. Okay. During the kiss and cry. And in interviews, she yes. had her bullet points out and you know, she gives very intense and very particular answers about their entrances and the things about. And you know what I like about Megan? She was like, she had a baby. She's been through all the changes of life. We did not know if like Battle of the Blades would be possible. She has worked, Jonathan. Like she was doing all those workout classes in her basement. Aliona Sevchenko was shading her. She, remember, she was like the weak link in that class at one point in time. No, Vanessa was like cheating on some of the exercises. Megan was not. Megan wasn't like nailing them, but Megan was like dying, but doing it. Okay. She has clawed her way up into shape, into Battle of the Blades, doing throw jumps and twists. And like, my God, she went throw for the win. Jumps, right? What? Throw triple jumps. Yes, okay. You know, Jillian was like in the bottom last week, to the victory of Battle of the Blades. I'm just telling you, like, of course she won. Of course, okay? Like, my goodness, yes, okay? Zdilina, like, Molodia. That's the epitome of like, you put in the work, you're gonna get it, right? Like, never has there been like a better example. Listen, she needs to be coaching KMT, okay? <laughs> if KMT wants to get out of fifth or sixth place, she needs to have Jillian pushing her, okay? and pissing her off and the whole deal. It's remarkable what that what that girl can achieve. Honey, yes, oh, no. yes, no. okay. But such a serious student of the sport. Like I remember when she would be like, you said I didn't point my toe in this lift and da, 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 da. And then boom, 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 in the inbox are side by sides of everyone still in the photo lift. And she's like circling this foot, talking about how she could move her foot this way. I was like, Oh my gosh, you are in it. You care so much. It's so remarkable. She is a two time world champion, Jonathan. Okay. And then they were seventh. And then they came back to win a bronze. Listen, this gritty girl, she once, it didn't even take her to her second season of Battle of the Blades. Quarantine, like, doesn't matter. Okay. Like, she uh, yeah. is like getting on to season seven, honey. Okay. Like, this girl. Remember, she was telling us, like, after the Olympics, I don't miss competing. I am, I feel at home. Well, I came back real quick. Okay, let me tell you. I enjoyed that two weeks or whatever that was, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was Aliona's workout class that motivated her. To be that, that awoken her inner competitor, yeah. I think she saw Vanessa James cheating on those exercises and she was like, yes. Absolutely. You are not going to take this battle. I'm take her in a Battle of the Blades final. <laughs> she did. Okay. And she did. And she did. Okay. Good yes. Good for her. Jillian, respect. This is your moment. Okay. And I oh, did congratulate her, and she could have at least like hit the heart button, but maybe she's gotten too many. Um, like she swamped. Yeah. It's no good. Okay. 
Right here, my god. <laughs> Amazing. I'm a fan. Wait, that's a nice timing because that feels like we've covered pairs at NHK because there were none. <laughs> there were none. There is the one that does that Megan and Bruno actually do work with, but they're in Canada training. So we will see them soon, I think. So maybe for um, maybe for nationals, because a lot of the skaters who were supposed to appear at other Grand Prix mm -hmm. then didn't get to switch over. Remember, we, that was with the right. Tarasa Morozov situation and the whole deal. So yeah. silly ISU. I, kind of. <laughs> Come on, but we did see the ice dance event, Jonathan. Yes, we did, Dave. Yes, we did. This was really about two teams. Wow. <laughs> and really about one, <laughs> like, yeah. right? Um, yeah. So earlier this week, Zara Marina Zueva came out and said that Daisuke Takahashi was more talented than Queen Tessa Virtue and King Scott Moyer. I gasped because you know, the Japanese on social media, the Daisuke fans, they are loyal. They love him. Me and too. they're not, um, they're not gonna cut you the way the Hanyu fans will. I agree. They're about their extreme love for him, but you don't want that love to turn on you, right? Like that, right? right? They are protective, yeah. but I was giving like slight side eye, and you know, the kid, everyone else was like, well, talented how? Like overall talent, ice dance talent, what talent? Marina can walk that statement back at any moment and clarify. <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> no, I'm not waiting. I was like, I believe it. I believe it. So as I was talking to one friend who did ice dance, he did singles, did ice dance coach, and he was saying that his biggest thing about Kana and Daisuke was that they could have given you watered down programs, but they gave you full ice dance difficulty competition one. I remember we haven't seen them. Like we hadn't seen Boo, no one heard from him. People would ask right. him how it was going. It was like all quiet on the Western front while he studied. He gave a very legitimate performance. You know, we didn't know what kind of a stunt this was going to be. Is this going to be Lori Hernandez making a gymnastics comment? Nasty and Sean, where they give up midway, but still appear on TV? Like, what was the real effort here? I think he's serious. Yeah, it, it seemed a very, it, it was a real effort. It looked like a better version of what I had pictured in my mind. We knew the lifts were going to be bad. Her hip line actually looks like an inch higher than his at times. I don't know if you noticed that, but they, yeah. Marina like works those angles, like who's on which side when, like when they're yeah. doing it. I um, the yellow pants. <laughs> this is all the genius of Zueva. Look, she has a fun, like Galina's Miavskaya, she has a fun retirement project, okay? She's just like having fun. What I thought is hysterical is I believe that oftentimes Marina has like a CD with 12 tracks on it that she'll give someone if they come to her for choreography. It definitely has Gone With The Wind on it, had, has La Bayadere, and she's like, this is your first season program. In the way that Alexa and Brandon are doing that Josh Groban generic, mm -hmm. it's like a Marina Zueva expensive generic program, right? You know what? I am so here for it, Dave. It's I wonderful. loved that free dance. I loved it. I understand its limitations as a beginning team and like obviously, you know, the particular elements themselves were not so elevated, but just the construction of this program, I was like, when is the last time we actually saw a dance program constructed like this? I thought that there were so many highlights to it in the film. Yeah. So she doesn't hide the fact that he's not a nice dancer. Right. He is a beautiful skater. Just, yeah. I'm not saying a single skater. I'm not saying that he's a beautiful skater, like period, right? Obviously he has stuff to work on in the pattern. You know, Daisuke always has that kind of his own little rhythm to the footwork and the sequence right. that now is judged like on a one, two, three, one, two, three. And in that term, I think that is the biggest challenge for him will be that pattern dance. Plus the way the ice dancers do turns are different than the way single the skaters do. Yeah, to come by surprise, yeah. So that is going to be the biggest hurdle for them moving forward. I think the rhythm dance will be 
inherently more difficult for them. Obviously they fell on the Twizzles here, but you have to think if not for falling on the Twizzles, they would have been second here, right? And that's a, just like, you can fix that. Like that is your, so I think Japan is gonna help them. I think Japan is gonna help them. And I think they're gonna go, I mean, the, the point gap was so big. Listen, uh -huh. Tim Coletto actually took his wife's last name officially on his citizenship documents. It's Misato's last name. He, it is not official like on the Chiron yet, but I mean, this is a boy who's doing, he has gone to every country to make it to the Olympics and, um, I think there's like a 15 point spread now. It's gonna be like, you know when you're on 538 and you're like looking at the numbers and you're like, can they make it up? Can they make off this Senate race in Georgia? How much is two percentage points? How much is one percentage point, right? You're like 15 points in ice dance in a year, in a couple weeks, can he do it? With Marina. It's a it's another Marie France Marina showdown. <laughs> Daisuke has X Factor. And that's the thing, Dave, when I watched um, Tim skate the free dance, I saw something that my eye understood as more current like yeah this is what everybody does oh yeah these are moves that they've done before like that sort of thing but even with the limitations of of the execution of the elements something about the free dance something about its performance something about his energy something about his skating skills something about the effort marina put into it for them like i just think i think it bodes well for dice case chances i do i think that tim and Masato need to come out of the box more. This is their second year doing this program. And it reads maybe a little safe, especially in the performance. That's exactly the word, it's safe. And they need to come up with something like, wow, wow. Or at least more along those lines, right? Like more edge, more, because they do have the experience in ice dance and they need to kind of own that. Yeah. Daisuke, the biggest situation besides learning ice dance, I think is gonna be his health. And can he lift someone that is almost his exact size without getting injured? Right. Doing rotational lifts, doing all of this new stuff, not having the years of weight training and things like that that the other ice dance boys do and they still get injured. Can Daisuke stay healthy and execute this and I think that is going to be his biggest challenge over the next year yeah. to put in the work and trust the process without getting injured but I think Marina is a good coach for that and manager for that so I'm excited this is going to be one of those like shows within the show this unique battle is going to be so interesting I think it'll ultimately be really good for both teams and as much as I think Masato and Tim will um feel heat and tension over the next year that maybe they weren't planning on um, experiencing as they're trying to make their first Olympics. It'll ultimately be, be better for them as ice dancers in the long run, having gone through this intense competition because they haven't had it in Japan. Well, and it could be really good for the discipline there. Yes, absolutely. You know what I mean, like to, to see to see this kind of play out will be very interesting. Daisuke will make more young skaters want to be ice dancers. Some of those Mia Hamada girls that <laughs> maybe are not so good at- um, like Beautiful knees and edges, like, yeah. Yeah, I, it'll help in the long run. So you foresee it as, as it's gonna be close? In a year? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I see it's going to be close, but I still see Daisuke on top. If he keeps, if he keeps at it, because I, I am inclined to agree that they'll, they'll help. What GOE do you think Daisuke could get from like an international competition on the lifts, though? Because that is like we're not just going to be competing at NHK. We're going to have to go outside the country to compete. Right. Exactly. And 
I don't think it'll be in GOE. I think it will be in PCS. Right, but I think when you look at the levels on the lifts and the points, that is gonna be that, the pattern and health are gonna be the hardest parts for them. Yeah, in, in some of the rotational lifts, like you just, you, you still almost heard him just a little bit be like, <clears throat> You yeah, I mean? like it just looks like oh, you're like oh yeah. I guess when they do all those changes, that's very effortful and difficult. You're like oh yeah. Look, it's great for the discipline of ice doing it. Yeah, it speaks to how difficult it is. It will challenge everyone. It will bring more attention to the discipline in Japan, where they are only typically interested in the disciplines that they're good at. Uh, compared enough. to the others on that same level. But when you watch Daisuke do the side-by-side -side step or even the twizzles, I'm handing out GOE like this, okay? <laughs> like, like, yeah, make yeah. it rain. How do you yeah, make it all rain? All like, all like, oh my God, okay? 100%. I'm sorry, Tim. Just, that knee, that knee that he has. The opening of the free dance, like the first 10 seconds, you're like, what is this? Why am I watching? This is amazing. What discipline is this? Yes. Yeah. Not saying that he's a straight up and down ice dancer, but. Yeah, no, 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 no one's saying that, but he is, he is a pretty iconic skater in general. It has the vibe of when Tiffany Stiegler um, went into ice dance and like was trying to make the Olympics with her charisma. <laughs> and her beautiful free leg, and you're like, do we have enough time? <laughs> do we wow. have like wow. right? Now, if the Olympics are postponed a year and Daisuke can stay healthy. Which another year is is a big ask for that. Tim and Masato should pull a Tanya Harding. It's all I'm saying. It's all I'm saying, Justin. Like that. <laughs> okay, like. What do you mean, get third on Dancing with the Stars? Yes, yes, okay, <laughs> yes. Should do. Yeah. <laughs> and really, we'd all be here for it. Okay, that is. <clears throat> you, want it to, you want a sport to become really popular? <laughs> I'll tell you something from personal experience. <laughs> it comes way up, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> We're joking, people. It's a oh. joke. It's a joke. Okay. Hey, watch. J just watch. There will be know. people that are going to say in Twitter, Dave and Jonathan were encouraging physical violence this week. I, know. I think we're coming. <laughs> Honey, we don't want anyone harmed. Okay. It's of course not. All right. But in the men's event, <gasps> I have to say, should the Olympics be postponed one year? Yuma Kagiyama is. What a mo- I just love him. I just love him. And he's sort of, you know, KG for a while was our go-to third guy. And that's why we were excited when Daisuke came back for the other discipline for a while. Um, what an exciting third man to what? be. I mean, and, and maybe more than that, but I mean, to like round out what could be this, this incredible team of three Japanese men at the Olympics would be sensational. Yes. Um... He, to me though, I was looking beyond third man. I was like, okay, when Yuzu and Shoma retire, this is a boy who could be competitive with the best in the world. For uh, a keep, long time. Something seems very sustainable about his skating and technique. I think that maybe we could make him like a Champari partial resident. Like we could at least give him a passport to Champari. He could like learn how to be like one of Lambiel's boys. Maybe he could like borrow Dennis's top that he wore at Nebelhorn that one time. Like just give him some personality uh, for a day. Okay. Because that'll help. Okay. I think that that's like what he is like missing a little bit is that Lambiel flair, right? He's got beautiful lines. There's beautiful yeah. like space between his arms and his body, like the jump landings are just held and so lovely. It's just everything about it is so lovely and much more reminiscent of what I associate with the Japanese men because that wasn't necessarily, what used to be sort of a mainstay in Japanese men's skating is not necessarily the case now, but Yuma definitely represents that to me. His technique is so good. His knees are so good. The patterns, the ice coverage, we just need really great music and choreography. Yeah, yeah. 
And he needs a little bit of that extra flair. Yeah, a little pizzazz of some sort, like to come off the page, but it's it's just what he's doing is just so nice and airy. He needs to be able to skate to Leona Lewis and make me a fan so much that Sui and Han will use that same piece of like saccharine music that okay. made me a believer, okay? That whole summer I was singing it, okay? <laughs> All right, look, Lombiel made me a believer. As only Lombiel can. Yes. Yeah. And I would also like Kazuki Tomono to become a partial resident. Um, yeah. You know, what would you take away here with him? Okay. He's had some ups and downs as he's been adding the harder elements and consistency wise. His quad sal cow scares the bejesus out of me because he's just a little quick on the takeoff. Hmm. Like it looks like he rushes and spins it from like a top rather than keeping his right hip back a little bit longer. It like spins in the air a little bit, but he got it done. But um, let, let's just, um, because our friend Misha pulled like a Philip Mills level of diva last night and I really enjoyed it. It, it was like a congratulations post um, peppered with a backhanded compliment about um, the piece, which I love when choreographers do. Okay, especially like an up and coming choreographer, like you're not Sandra Bezik just yet. You're not Laura Nichol. Though it got simplified quite a bit compared to the original one, the energy was the one that I asked for. You read it, you saw it, it existed, okay? That's all I'm saying. That, <laughs> from Misha G, the person who put together Medvita Tosca edit, the person who edited this Moulin Rouge together. Yes, Jonathan, yes, we love choreographer energy. Oh my God, I, I <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, it, it happens in music sometimes too, when a composer will be like, that's, Although that's not what I wrote, what a lovely job that was. I mean, it's basically the same thing that is so, wow, okay. He has a great future in opera. He has a great yeah. future in oh, Misha, yes. Oh my God, that's, that's tough. That is amazing. Like that's I like Misha so much more now. If that skater does well, you're doing well, do you know what I mean? I understand it's it. frustrating to see your work watered down, but talk to any of those main people when they will always say when pushed, well, yeah, obviously they took a lot out from Listen, what you originally crafted it, but. When I was having my coffee this morning, I was watching Bravo and one of the Real Housewives was accusing another Real Housewives boyfriend or husband of being an opportunist in Atlanta. And I was like, you're all reality stars aren't you all opportunists? Like, yeah, in some way you're all looking for that, yeah. Aren't we all in a sense, right? In a one sense. <laughs> God, yeah. <laughs> but then. Smash that like button below. <laughs> but then Misha, you know, he would be in like 11th place and still asked to skate in every gala. Yeah. So I'm like, this is a boy. But he created a brand as a result. Like he, he definitely had his intentions clear. Listen, though it got simplified quite a bit compared to the original one, the energy was the one that I asked for. Thanks. That's why he's a star, Jonathan, okay? <laughs> Did you so see, fun. look, you know why else he was a star? Alexa, we've never teased you about this, but when you're in the back video of that, um, the dance, <laughs> the Misha Gee, um Champs Camp video, uh, where like, yeah, I think you were in either a pink or like red leggings, and you were in the back like hiding behind other people, and like Tim LaDuke was way up front doing the Misha moves, and Chris was also hiding in the back. Those videos are <laughs> legendary, legendary, okay? I like zoomed in, I was watching, I kind of wanted to do the class, maybe not videotaped for everyone. You know, I've got some limbs that can, I don't know if the style will work with them, but yes, honey, yes. All right, this boy, I think he is, okay. So 
re- I was at that dinner party last week and the girl that was like playing with her hair in a way that was like legend. I told you this story, right? How the girl was like playing with her hair and she had this like long- Oh yeah, I, I that, just, it's just so unappetizing. <laughs> it was so dramatic, you don't even know. Okay. 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 So, okay. And like there, there was, I'm not gonna go on the side. You have, you have places to go, people to see. Okay, so she was telling me that you need to listen to the audiobook of Christopher Chacon talking about his sister, Madonna. Oh. I did my homework. Okay. I interrupted Hidden Valley Road and listened to it. I'm on Madonna rabbit hole. I'm like reading the Andrew Morton book right now. He is a very entitled brother who, while I think that he has contributed to some of Madonna's aesthetic and her look may have it twisted that he played um, a bigger role than really Madonna knew what to yeah. pick and take from each person and suck out like a pit viper, right? right? I believe that Madonna was the talent and he did provide some aesthetic achievement, but I think she knew what to take and leave, right? But he was talking about his career and he's like very serious. Yes, well, I design lobbies and homes and I paint a bit and I work in music videos and I, um, you know, work as a person. So you're a bullshit artist, Renaissance man. Yeah, exactly. You'll just take any gig you can grab. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I think Misha G could like design a home too, Jonathan. He could find some of those pillows behind you in art. And does he want to come to New Jersey? Cause like, look, he can do my home. All right, what I get. Well, I mean, lest we forget Misha G's, um, was it? The last, the Jesus Christ Superstar, Last Temptation of Christ. I'm, 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 I'm there for all of it. Like, I don't, I'm a fan, okay. The crucifix with the, the sequence blood coming from his body. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, just, to, just so we keep our pulse on. Has Misha choreographed a Schindler's List yet? Because I am one, look. <laughs> I am one that like, comes by that music like very authentically, that I am like, this is the most beautiful piece of music I've ever heard. And I would like to skate out all of my feelings. And I believe that Misha understands that music as well. Okay, like I think you need an emotional boy to take that music to the top that only like a Joshua Ferris or Jason can. Or a but Paul Wiley. Misha was such um, like showbiz though. Like he definitely like was like laying it on thick. Okay, so we won't let him make the Holocaust costume. I'll handle that, okay? okay, okay but like- <laughs> but, uh, Just beware of the step sequence. That's all I'm saying. It might come across too jazzy if Misha's doing it, you know? Might be too triumphant of a moment for a Schindler's List program. I'll have Sandra look at it. There you go. And think. Sandra will ask you to make her look at it again. Or what did she say when Tessa and Scott, when they were like, oh, Sandra, we're gonna do Moulin Rouge. And she goes, huh. You're gonna give me, I guess, a reason to look at that again. Or she said she had some like kind of beautiful response to them using that music. Sandra Bessie just pulled off a great season of a show in a pandemic, okay? She is a literal like mic drop, okay? Like she got it done. She is, this show has come back from the dead on CBC. How many times we thought it was canceled? On well, high even when this started, didn't they have like a big a snafu because someone tested positive and they had to like delay everything? But you know, Mama Sandra took COVID seriously. I, they were all wearing masks. I think even that dog on the production had a mask. We've been watching, <laughs> okay? Okay. It's been a busy time, Sandra, but we've been impressed. The queen has risen. She has re reclaimed her dominance in Canada. Queen always rises to the top. Sandra. With her A-list friends, Kostya Gordieva, Renee Roca, you could all my favorites too, Sandra. You have taste, okay? Yeah, yeah. she is like-minded. She is like-minded for sure. Listen, I, I shared that Renee Roca and Gorsha Sur visited video this last week. It did very well on Facebook. I was like, yes, honey. Sending all the vibes to Alexa. Hopefully she saw it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna keep using Renee. <laughs> but speaking of US pairs, Dave, no, this is a hard week for you. Oh, we do have to say that 
um, me, Hamada, did have Lucas Honda here, mm -hmm. and he was giving us generic James Bond, but yeah. nice edges and yeah, it was pleasant. Yeah, kind of, I, I, yeah, I'm unsure of what maybe what his identity is yet on the ice, but you know, welcome Lucas. <laughs> We have two, okay? I, I bought two essential oils. I need a third because of lemon, because these are really my, I think these are the three essential oils that everyone needs. We need lavender for when like, Jonathan talks about Victoria Volchkova or Dmitry Aliyev. <laughs> um, we need peppermint for a little bit of, for little jazz hands, like, <laughs> yes. Yes, springtime, okay? I'm forgetting the name, that's for um, our bronze medalist, uh, female skater from NHK. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I love aromatherapy. I don't want to ingest it like that Netflix documentary, but you know, whether people are like eating their essential oils. Okay. Yeah, it's not really how that works. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Jonathan. I know. There have been rumors. And this is actually. You know, it all ties into stuff going on with Delilah and people moving and all of that, which apparently is still going on and interviews are still happening and lots of drama happening. And so Tara and Danny have split. Danny has retired at this point and they were, you know, cause Balaj split with his partner. And then of course, Tara Kane and Balaj were on vacation. And there was the whole feeling of why are they on vacation when we lost so much time with quarantine and nationals is coming up, but then Tara Kane isn't known for having the hardest work ethic or ever really upping her technical ante. So we thought like, maybe they'll be okay. And then he was on vacation with his girlfriend and you're like, are they all on vacation together? But then it looked like, no, they're not on vacation together. Ooh. And we know you love Danny. I know, I think he's so good. Jonathan, just talk it out. How do you feel? How do you feel about Tara and Danny? Remember, Danny, Danny could have skated with Deanna Stellato a couple years ago and he's stuck by Tara Kane. Uh, and... I mean, it could have probably been with several people along the way that would have yielded a different result, but we all make choices and I he made his. I mean- His he... father got rid of Jessica Callalang. Was that the big mistake of his career? Of course it was. Of course it was. <laughs> I mean- I think his father looks at that every day and is like, why? I mean, it, it's the same example of like when you and I- They made... could have given you a Pocahontas and John Smith program with those like beautiful, yes, you know it, you know it, John, yes, you feel it, you feel it, you feel it too. That's terrible. Can you ever hear the wolf cry, blue like, on like, like she's the <laughs> Come on, they could do like, just around the river bend, lift. I mean, come Ah, um, like the things that we could have gotten. No, I want them to only do like the raccoon and pug music or something like. <laughs> um, it's tricky. Like, listen, um, I don't know Jessica Helen. Is she? Is she? I actually don't know what her. I hope I didn't say that. I don't know. She has that great skin tone that can do so many different like oh, programs beautiful. and like. She has that like beautiful ambiguous ethnic ethnicity going on where she's like. A little of this, a little of that, a little Madison chalk. Like it's that like that beauty that just you can just do it all. So <laughs> Pocahontas and John Smith was more of a take on the fact that like she's like beautiful in that way, and he is like so white, like whiter than correction fluid. Like right, right. Like yeah, he, a, bit, a bit, a bit. Like he's an American explorer kind of white, right? Like, I, and I don't know why this phone is ringing and no one's picking it up, but it's okay. We're just gonna keep moving along. It's Danny, it's Danny. <laughs> Danny, it's Jessica Cowlang being like, um, Dave, I am one third uh, this. Yeah, you're racist. Yeah, that's what she's calling to say. <laughs> I don't mean it in that way, Jonathan. Am I gonna have to edit this out? No, no, you don't. I know what you're Oh my goodness, Jonathan. Here's the thing, like like we said for many years when Tim LaDuke was just kind of not on the scene and we're like, this is one of our most talented guys, what a waste. I mean, that's a little bit, Danny, and unfortunately it's felt a little bit that way for the last couple of years competitively. But I mean, it did seem clear that the writing was on the wall. This was not going to happen. 
in a Sam Smith type way, the writing was on the wall or the writing, like in a dramatic, like Jason Brown short program way or like the writing yeah. was on the wall? Uh, I like, but they're not current enough for Sam Smith. They're still back doing Andrew Lloyd Webber and, you know, Les Mis. So. Have you seen that video with him embracing his body positivity and like dancing to diamonds, like feeling himself up? Because that yeah, is a video- most recent. I wasn't sure how I felt about yes, it. Yes, you need to watch it, okay. Yeah, there are some of his music I very much enjoy and some of them also. There you go. <laughs> Like Dancing with a Stranger, I really like that song. Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. And that's what it felt like sometimes when Tara and Danny were skating. <laughs> like they were dancing with a stranger. I don't know what was, no, I just felt like a transition. Also, you know what I'm upset about with US Paris is like, I was emailed about it. We were all like, we've known that there was gonna be this documentary that like, was gonna be with Nina Mosier, Elton John. And like, you know, the two pairs, Kane and LaDuke, that we were finally gonna get to watch it. It was Zabianco and Ember. It was such a yes. fascinating song. Which like they retired and like Ashley and Tim had that bad fall and lost and have like lost their way a little bit. Like the irony was there and only a, a way, right? It, look, the website Flow Gymnastics used to do this thing where they would like always do a, um, like a, a 20 minute pe like little mini documentary on like a gymnast and then it would take them a long time to edit and then by the time it came out the person had like retired from competition they were like it, or they were retired the next week like they had like, on the timing yeah they okay. had like an 18 month period of this happening right it was a little bit of that so um yeah but I lost my way. What we were talking about? I'm sorry. I started you thinking were about wondering about the movie. That's all, really. I mean, oh I'm... yes. Sorry, I was going so into like the flow gymnastics and specifics. Okay. So Kayla Duke, like, they were like, we we're gonna see it, and then I get a bootleg Russian version, being like, oh, good, this will be great. Like, we can just like watch, and at least we can see like what Ashley and Tim are talking about. Yeah. There's a Russian person dubbing over the dialogue when they're speaking on the version that was sent to me. Okay. We don't even know what they're saying with like the sound and like without the okay. subtitles and like they can only pick up every fifth word. Like I don't know. It was yeah, it seemed like it would be something that would be much more publicized, but definitely much more fun. fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Are we ever gonna get to see it? What's happening with it? Okay. Wait, like Dave, I'm curious for like your closure. That was and that's a wrap on the Grand Prix 2020, right? Yeah, well, I mean, that's, and there is. So I've had this feeling since I got back on the ice with, um, after my ankle injury, because as I got hurt, like the numbers started really going up again, right? Like, and then I, I was like, is the ankle gonna heal before the rinks are closed? You know, we have to live for today and enjoy what we have, Jonathan, okay? What a beautiful sentiment, Dave. You don't know if you're gonna get to skate next week. The rink could shut down, that we don't know. Like, I, the rink could shut down at any moment. Like, there is a thing. I had to get COVID tested the other day. Have you? The due to the nose or the tongue, the tongue or the uh, cheek swab? I didn't have the choice. So that that's the thing too, is that it is so, it's getting bad. And it's getting bad to the point where I, I, I've not had, it was hard to get an appointment. Uh, that, my, like, you have to call in, like it took two days to get like the appointment out. I was like, whoa. And it was like the drive by, they come with the hazmat suits, they jab the thing up your nose, hit your brain, whatever. So, because at one of the rinks around here, two coaches had it. And say what you will for the reputations of one rink, I will just say that one rink does temperature checks and the other one uses the honor system. Yeah. And sure enough, which rink had the spread? Right. Nice. Yeah, it's tough. And I'm just curious, you know, all this discussion of vaccines and all this sort of stuff and how does one administer them? How fast does one administer them? How does this all work? How does this play out quickly enough? For Simone Biles to claim her gold medals and... <laughs> kind of. I, I'm so skating oriented. I'm like still 22 Excuse baby. Excuse me. But definitely, you? 
I don't see how it's possible. Are you not here for Simone to take her place this summer as being like the star? <laughs> okay, like- I'm less skeptical she'll be able to. I know. Right? But I think Japan will at least have the world team trophy or maybe they'll move the world championships to Japan. Okay. I don't know how it'll all work. That, that's above my pay grade. Yeah. How we'll have the qualification for the Olympics because you can't use 2019 worlds. Like, no, of course not. Yeah, Zagitova's right in. Yeah. Zagitova's going. She's. Yeah. And Medvedeva's. <laughs> I mean, here at that, side, that third spot. Yeah, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I just don't know. It is, yeah. um, it's a wrap. But at least, you know, we saw glimpses of skating coming alive. Like, I thought, so you, you had me watch the Italian event. Yes. Where we saw my boy Matteo Guarize compete for the first time in a while. Um, the side new side. body suit, new roller skating type costume. I know, where it almost looked like he was in a backless onesie. There was like nude on the, on the back of his unitard, which I was confused by, but I'm um, just seeing. He's a model and the clothing is performance art, perhaps. Yeah, uh, it sure is. <laughs> when we last saw them, she couldn't jump. They were in real danger, I felt, the last time we saw them. We saw them now. She was jumping good. <laughs> like, she was the jumping side well. Side being landed, the throws were being landed, you know? This was, this was encouraging to see, no question. And then we saw our lot of usual men. Um, so, I only saw the short programs. For yes, them. Mateo Rizzo mm -hmm. is interesting because I think he, I don't know if he was injured or in his feelings or what was happening during quarantine, but he got way behind and was yeah. not, in, he has improved so much for the, a couple weeks ago when we saw him. Right. He's still behind. I mean, a triple double combination here is nothing to um, right. celebrate at the moment, but he at least looks like he's moving in the right direction of like, I think the training situation actually looked like it, maybe it's working. Like he looked way better than he did yeah. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Daniel Grossel is interesting. He's giving us all the hairography he can. <laughs> trying to make him interesting. They're trying, he's giving us all the Benoit, like black and white energy. He's a bit gangly at the moment. Like looks as he is still growing into and finding his limbs, mm -hmm. right? Are we allowed to suggest that someone visit Mia Hamada? We're not asking that she is allowed to like... Abuse someone. No, can we have supervised visitation with Mia Hamada? Hey, yeah. Or get her assessment, her diagnosis on what to do. Maybe like Sandra Beza could visit Mia Hamada with him and she could be like, a, hmm. No, hands off the ponytail, Mia. Yeah. Just focus uh -huh. on the... Back, Back away, six feet rule. <laughs> it could be helpful. Six feet rule, no. <laughs> He doesn't know that word in Japanese. Yeah, and you know, I, but I know we don't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I think Sandra could give us some supervised visitation and bring us there, okay? Yeah, I, I don't understand his limitations yet. If Daniel is capable of something more elegant or if this is an, an inherent cap on how far it can go. Yeah. Um, also, there was one other thing this week that I don't know if you caught, but it's on YouTube and it's 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 okay. must see. Okay. Because remember, I once visited the Gabois Rink, right. and it's like organized to such a degree, but there's so much happening at any moment when you watch those teams. But each team has a 15 minute by 15 minute block schedule where they go from one coach to another. And they did a they did like a pop up surprise Instagram live with on ice perspectives. And you get to see the teams working together on the ice. And you know, it's it's already hard to know what's happening in that rink. And then the on ice perspectives is like when you're like going like this and like, you know, it's not for everyone. I appreciate some of the camera angles. Sometimes I think it's a little too much. And I would like maybe less because I want to be like, which which pattern are they going on the ice? Because like it's hard to tell when we're going like you need to zoom here out. and there and like, you know, it's a lot, right? Okay. But there were some of our favorite teams on the ice. Chalk and Bates are keeping their old programs. Fair enough. The British team. <laughs> that's doing the Madonna. That's the okay. fair one. Okay. They, let me tell you, they are going, so after this crop retires, they are going straight to the top, honey. They are soaking up her essence. 
Okay. They're sassy. Like, I am here for it. Okay. I mean, I'd hobble and on you. Let me tell you. Do you follow them on Instagram? I have to be honest. I used to. Okay. And then I stopped. Right. So, like, I understand why you would unfollow. Because I feel like we don't really touch on it enough. There is a modeling, like, voluptuous energy going on in Madison Hubble's Instagram and, like, in the black and white photo. We've all become Instagram models since uh, Roman's husband, like, started this academy. Like, are we just, how often do we have photo shoots? Every day after practice? And, like, what are we doing? Well, I mean, I kind of get what they're trying to do in the, just the sense that, like, her image will become somewhat of a brand, but, like, it's... I am so intrigued, okay? I can't say I'm here for, I'm intrigued. Yeah. I'm not looking away. Yeah. And there is a point when like, Hubble and Donahue were skating together. And you can watch versus how Chalk and Bates are like good students, right? When they're performing, like Evan is such a good lap dog. He's like a Labrador who's like, yes. And he's smiling to the camera when they finish doing their section. Hubble and Donahue, do at some point they're like working on some pattern and like all of a sudden they like stopped a little abruptly and maybe they're going slow you could just like see her give him a look and like he is like talking about what he thinks went wrong and she's just like skating off like 15 feet away and like zach is just like running his mouth and like then he's like saying something to the coaches and you could tell like they're just like letting him talk and like ignoring what he's about to say <laughs> Go and watch it, okay? There is, okay, okay. you can learn so much when people are like, I think she just like one team better. You're like, well, maybe it's the energy also that the teams are putting. Are bringing to the work environment, yeah. If there's a collective, like let him just run his mouth and we'll keep moving on after that. I mean. It is such a moment that like we <laughs> could be studied, okay? Yeah. Did anyone else catch it? Did anyone else it's laugh? Awesome. It's on, it's on, you posted on the skating lesson Instagram? No, no, no. It's on the On Ace Perspectives YouTube. Oh. And let me tell you, like, there is um, a lot of body language happening. You know, that they should skate to that. The, remember when, like, Huff and LeDre did body language? <gasps> so, <laughs> yes. That could be a Hubble and Donahue show program. Okay, okay. that would okay. be what we are all here for. I still think they're going to probably win the U.S. championships this year based on the... Um, head start they've had and they look more collected and energetic but I'm here for this entertaining rivalry I'm here for these outsized personalities in a very niche world like I'm just what is happening in that ring I don't know I don't know okay but you have a little clue now you have a little bit more of a clue I thought you were grabbing the peppermint again <laughs> I just you need to watch it. Okay. okay. There's just okay. like, and you need to follow Madison Hubble's Instagram. Like, okay. Yeah. For a while, it became clear she was definitely like angling for a thing. And I was like, I totally get it, but I don't know that I need. That's not why I am in particular following her page. So I think we let it go. I mean, like, her brother can literally put his his feet behind his head and like make himself into a human pretzel and probably take photos. Like, this is just an interesting family. Okay. Like, this is just really? they're theatrical. Yeah. They're artistic, they're costume designers. Like, I'm just looking here for all of it. You know? Yeah, all the things. She's had to put up with Zach for how long? Like, sometimes they get along very well. Sometimes it looks like they have some interpersonal Last times. Yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. You know, On Ice Perspectives needs to follow more of that. Can they do documentary series like Them at Home? What about off ice perspectives or? <laughs> yeah, like. Personal perspectives. <laughs> and like, how did Zach invent his own like form of BS yoga that's like not calisthenics, not yoga, it's called activation. And like. Do you feel activated? Yeah. <laughs> like, he really, he's just like invented his own thing. And you're like, is activation a thing? Like. Is this Marie Franz like telling Stephanie Handler like, Zach has a certain ego. Let him think he, you know, yeah, invented this, right? Like, give him this. Give him this. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know how he and the mom have the same haircut. It's all great, okay? Like I am so here for all of this energy. There needs to be a Hubble and Donahue documentary with the moms and the siblings. And we need- And Zabiaco and Ember. <laughs> not in that way, okay? Okay, okay? And I think we need to see like Chuck and Bates, a little of that. You know, we could talk about when they were all with Yuri and Yasa together, what was happening, like when there was the help. Yeah, I'm here for it. I just want to know. Yeah. It's a very interesting hub, that place. Yes. OK. Yes. I like yes. they've all trained together at different times in their careers. You know, I would like a feature film, OK? <laughs> I, uh, and it sounds like you got a snippet of one. <laughs> I would have like the different, uh, wouldn't you like to watch Confessionals of Marie France Romaine and Patch try to like speak about this? The day, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be entertaining. I don't know who outside of us would watch it, but it would be entertaining. I'm sorry. How about that Moulin Rouge documentary that Tessa and Scott did where like they painted Moulin Rouge like on a billboard on the wall? Like, what was that about? What I, happened to that billboard? Was that just- Oh, I missed that one. Somehow that didn't make it into my, my queue. Sorry, Tessa. <laughs> Although she matches you today. How dare you? You need <laughs> to go watch that. I can't promise I'll watch that, but I will watch the On Ice Perspectives from Montreal. You, there's so much energy happening there. There's like little glimpses, okay? Little kisses from heaven. Like, uh, <laughs> little gifts, little gifts. <laughs> oh, Hold it, Angela, looks sexy, everyone. <laughs>